What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings, Mark the Messenger. We are back in another video, man. This one's going to be about seven signs God is protecting you from a bad slash toxic slash miserable, horrible relationship, okay? And before I start this video too, you have to understand, um, most of the time when it comes to relationships in the dating world, that the rejection is usually God's protection. If you're God's chosen one, you cannot be in a relationship with just anybody. And this goes to not just with dating but also just friendships too you can't align your spirit with just any everybody and you know you may like there might be a girl that you really like or for you ladies there might be a guy that you really like and that person is just of the world they have nothing to do with god they don't want to seek him they don't want they don't want jesus in their life and you and you are following the narrow path there's no way you guys could be together there's no way that that relationship is going to work for the most part now of course some people could have a change of heart there's always a small percent but for the most part you know that's what i have with number one is the number one sign that god's protecting you from a, a, a bad relationship is you have to look take, take heed to the signs guys the holy spirit will always warn you but number one is you're not equally yoked with somebody this is the number one key thing this is the reason why um bad soul ties are form uh toxic relationships and you know this could either go with even family members and friendships you're not equally yoked with somebody so y'all can't y'all kind of align your spirit your soul with the individual you know it's just going to be havoc um let's say let's for instance right you believe in god you believe in the bible you believe in jesus right but that other person they may believe in jesus but they're more like on the islam side where they only believe him as him as a prophet okay um, it just, it's going to be a lot of conflict, a lot of arguments, which I'm going to talk about in a, in a minute. So before you even get in a relationship with somebody, guys, you have to know what their belief system is. You know, I know a lot of times people don't like to talk about religion or politics and I get it, but you want to know what someone's belief system is. Do they believe in God? Do they believe in Jesus? Most importantly, because a lot of people believe in God, but it's not the God of the Bible. So, and this is why it's so important, guys. The Bible says to test someone's spirit. Okay, and you, you know a tree by its fruits. So never be in a rush to get with somebody, even though you may really like the person, may have good energy, good vibes, things of that sort, but you don't want to be in a rush to get into something because, you know, even the devil had, in the garden with Eve, I'm pretty sure he gave her good vibes and good energy. So you don't want to be so quick to, you know, join forces with something. Always be patient and always pray on things. Because sometimes you could pray if someone, if that person is meant to be in your life and God might give you a no. And that person may start to switch up. You know, God's always showing the signs. The thing is, we don't take heed. We don't pay attention to these signs. And we suffer because we don't we don't listen to God later on in life. And this is always, always happening in our lives. The war. We don't take heed to it. We, we God goes, gives us a sign. We may ignore it, things of that sort. And then we get punished for it. So I don't want you guys to go through that. Like I said, when you're God chosen one, you can't be aligned with just everybody. Okay, it's very hard, especially... You're on the narrow path, it's hard to get in relationships and marriages, but my number one advice I can give you guys is to seek God's kingdom daily and his righteousness and all things will be added into you. Never go out there seeking a par partner. God will bring that person to you, okay? Number two is the relationship doesn't glorify God, okay? Uh, the, the foundation of the relationship is based on the flesh, okay? So the part of, the, of a marriage, especially a marriage, was, you know, when Adam and Eve got together and they got married, it was to worship the Father in spirit and truth. That's what it was all about. Of course, it wasn't just that. You know, God told them to be fruitful and multiply, take care of the animals, things of that sort. But it has to, the, the relationship that, or slash marriage, it has to be centered around the most high. Okay, I'm going to specifically talk about relationships for those who are just now like trying to find a wife, because if you already have a marriage, you guys are already established, you guys already know what you're doing for the most part. But for those who are younger and like in the relationship field, always keep this in mind, like the relationship has to be centered around God. He has to be the foundation. That's how it's going to last. When you don't put God a part of it, you wanna, you know, make yourself your own God, uh, that's where the problems are gonna, you know, gonna arise in, in, in the relationship. So always keep this in mind, man. There's a relationship that you're in only you know the answer. If you are in a relationship or if you're in the talking stages, does it glorify God? Okay, is it the foundation? Is it based on flesh? Can you only talk to that person about worldly things when it comes to like spiritual things? Do, do Are they turned off? Are they not interested? These are the signs you gotta detect, guys, because if they're not interested in the beginning, what makes you think they're gonna be interested a couple months or a couple years later? For the most part, I know some people could get a change of heart, but for the most part, okay? So always keep that in mind, man. The relationship does not glorify God. That is God protecting you from a bad relationship, okay? 
Number three is the person is constantly bringing up their ex slash past relationships, okay? Beware of these people. They still have a soul tie with their ex and they have not they haven't healed yet, okay? This is a lot. This would happen a lot, a lot of times. And one thing that I learned about women is that when she's really liking you, when she's really feeling you, she opens up herself and she starts speaking a little bit too much and it can kind of turn you off. I know a lot of you brothers maybe could relate to this, okay? And when someone's talking about their ex, talking about their past relationships, that's always a red flag because that lets me know and that should let you know that that person maybe still have a soul tie with that person. Maybe that person is still entertaining that ex or maybe they're, maybe they want nothing to do with them, but that, that ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend is keep popping back up and they're entertaining it, okay? Uh, that means this soul tie is, is still a soul form, okay? And if you do have a soul tie with someone who you don't want nothing to do with, maybe you learn your lesson or whatever, right? You should do a lot of fasting and praying and don't open the door. Don't open the door when they hit you back up, you know, let your intentions be known. You want nothing to do for that, uh, nothing to do, you moved on and just eventually time, time will, you know, will heal, okay? You don't want to be in a relationship uh, with a male or a woman who's still stuck on the past of their past relationships with the ex, guys, it's never going to grow. You're never going to get anywhere. So you got to always, always take heed to this, guys. The person is constantly bringing up an ex. It's a good chance they still have a soul tie with that person. Okay. Uh, this is why it's so important before you get married that, you, you know, if, unless you're a virgin, okay, um, that you are delivered from all spirits, all soul ties with any past because Best believe that's gonna that's gonna haunt and traumatize and bring issues and problems in your marriage with your uh, with the next per, uh, the, the person you're gonna marry. Okay, so always keep this in mind. Okay, that person's always bringing up their ex. You know, now it's different if you ask questions about their past relationship or you know things of that sort. And they answer, but if that person is just constantly bringing that ex up. That's that's a red flag. Their heart still belongs to that person, guys. They're not. They may not tell you that. They may be in denial. You know, maybe they don't want that to happen, but that that's why it's you got to be careful, guys, who you align your body with, who you align your spirit and soul with, because the SEX intercourse is various it's a spiritual act. OK, it's not just you getting it off and things of that sort. It's various spiritual acts. So you got to make sure that you're waiting for marriage for that. All right. Number four is this is a big sign too, guys. The person keeps flaking on dates or plans you have made. This usually means God's protecting you. Rejection is a form of protection. Okay, I said that earlier in the video uh, that that's usually what it is. You know, when you know, God, when uh, when God, can, when when people are like trying to, or not trying to, but when people are flaky or people are not match, I guess matching their energy or like you know you're trying, you're going out of your way and that person's kind of like wishy washy or I guess lukewarm is a better way. You know they text you here and there and they make you happy. And then when it's time to meet up, they kind of go ghost or. They have excuses and plans. Listen, guys, when someone really likes you, there's going to be no excuses. There's going to be no flaking. They, they, they really want to see you. They really want to go on dates with you, hang out with you, have a good time. Okay. So when you, when that person keeps flaking on dates or plans that they made, it just means they don't really have high interest for you. Uh, now, of course, there are always exceptions. You know, there are emergencies that happen. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but if it's a consistent basis where they're just consistently flaking and, you know, they're not, and let's say if they, they, they there's a date that they either flake on or I want to say flake, but let's just say something may happen in their life, like an emergency. They have to be like, okay, something popped up. Can we reschedule the date? Can we reschedule the plan? Then that's that's cool, okay? But if they reschedule and then they flake again, you know, it's, it's just, you got to understand, okay? In the, in the world we're living in today, guys, especially for your brothers, a lot of women are talking to about three to five men on a daily basis. So you're competing against all those other men. Okay, so just always keep this in mind, man. When it comes to person, uh, the person keeps flaking on dates or plans that you made, you know, that's, yeah, you know, when someone who's meant to be God, when someone's sent by God, they don't do that. Okay, they don't, they don't flake. They don't have you questioning. They don't have you thinking, you know, or no, they, they don't, they don't have, they don't be flaking and doing all that. They don't be doing that, man. Okay, um, not to say that that person can't be sent by God, but for the most part, like, you know, when it came for me finding my wife, we didn't play those games. Like for what? What was the point of doing that? Okay. Uh, if you really like a person, see where it goes. You know, of course, not always going to be, you know, God sent. Sometimes it could just be, you know, a lesson or sometimes it could just be, you know, maybe y'all met up and maybe y'all learn from each other and keep it moving. 
But, you know, that's why you always got to use your discernment with certain people. Okay, number five. Number five kind of aligns with number one. It says, argument, conflicts, and verbal fights in the beginning stages. This is mostly a sign of being unequally yoked for the most part, okay? So always keep in mind when arguments and conflicts and verbal fights are in the beginning stages, like literally like within a month or two of y'all talking, what that it means it's going to get worse later on. If you guys don't come up with a solution to whatever that's causing the arguments, what's causing the conflicts, what's causing, causing the verbal fights, if y'all don't come up with a solution, what can we do to stop whatever that's causing that? And y'all just keep on fighting, y'all keep on fighting. It's gonna get worse more and more, and it could get really toxic, and bad things could happen in your life, which you know you don't want that. And then who knows? Maybe if y'all are having, you know, if y'all are having intercourse before marriage, uh, maybe you get pregnant. You know, now that now that dude doesn't want nothing to do with you. Now you're a single mom, things of that sort. You just don't want things of that to happen because, like I said, like it could be detrimental. So always take heed to the signs. All right, so that's number five. Number six is the Holy Spirit will warn you, okay? The person draws you, always, uh, when the person is always drawing you away from God and leads you to sin, they have bad, or they have had bad fruits, okay? The Holy Spirit will always warn you about certain individuals who come your way, whether it's relationship, friendship, things of that sort. A lot of times, guys, even me, I fall victim to this. We just don't take heed to the signs. We try to give the person the, the, benef the, the benefit of the doubt, or maybe we, we have friend of a friend and, you know, they're cool with each other. Listen, guys, um, if the Holy Spirit is warning you, what more can you say? What more can you do? It's warning you for a reason. And if you, if well, this is one thing I learned about God, right? If you ignore God, right? If God has showed you so much true color, so much uh, true, true intentions, and who they're really about, what they rep spiritually, and you ignore it, you're like, no, I'm gonna still be cool with that person, or I'm gonna still, I'm gonna still be in this relationship, right? God will allow that person to hurt you. God will allow that person to betray you. God will allow it, man. He will allow it because you ain't taking heed. Then that's what happens when you're disobedient. Okay, so the Holy Spirit will always warn you, but it's up to you to obey. It's up to you to pay attention to the signs. All right, so that's number six. And also, guys, if you guys made it this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, share, 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 all that good stuff. Number seven is beware of the narcissist you got to be be careful because as a chosen one you're usually attracting not like i say you're usually attracting but these are the tares okay these are the counterfeits these are the ones who pretend to be god's chosen but they got bad fruits but they really are the devil okay and these people as a chosen one you're going to be these people are going to come your way okay it's like they gravitate towards the light the darkness always tries to gravitate towards the light to, to strip you of your light to strip you of your joy okay to steal kill and destroy so what they do is they love bomb. And a lot of you ladies, you got to, you know, because women are very, when, when they're getting a love bomb, they can kind of get, they can kind of forget what's really taking place. Okay. So love bombing you to lure you in. And when things don't work out, they move on quickly. Now this happens to men too. So y'all got to be careful about the love bombing. They do that to lure you in. Now the soul tie is formed. Because remember, a soul tie is not only just through intercourse. Okay. Because there's a, there's a Bible verse in the book of Samuel or David and some other brother, I forgot what his name is, he said he loved him as his own soul. Okay, so a soul tie could be a friendship. A soul tie could be you all talking on the phone all the time. Y'all FaceTiming every night. Y'all texting, y'all calling, y'all hanging out. It doesn't have to always mean, you know, having intercourse. So when you're getting a love bomb and, and, and you know, you really like the person, that person may be attractive, y'all cool, blah, blah, blah. And now, now you're aligned and when things don't work out, they move on quickly, but you haven't moved on. You still stuck on that person. Two years later, they could be in four or five relationships later on, and you still stuck on that person. You haven't moved on. So take heed to the signs. Now, these are the seven signs God's protecting you from a bad relationship. If you guys made this far, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I love you guys so much. God bless you all. I'm out. Peace.